everyone. Uh, my name is Shane Ruman. I'm a local, a player local to Toronto, Canada, and um, uh, pretty active on the online scene. So uh, S Ruman in Discord and uh, on Jakoku, in the various leagues. So what I'm going to be uh, presenting today is uh, one of the games in the uh, Canadian team uh, online, Canadian team online tournament uh what that is exactly so um mine's desire right around the time the world cup fever was <laughs> gripping the world as it were or starting to uh, uh presented the idea of having a world cup of uh of uh l5r online and uh the idea really caught on i think there's a there's a long list of countries already signed up uh each one of them is going to have a three-player team plus uh, uh one or more alternates uh, so in Canada, we had a lot of people interested. Um, I think the count was 16 at time of the tournament. And so we decided to have a double elimination tournament to try and decide um, the, the team members. Uh, the final decision was the top two people coming out of the, ter of the double elimination tournament would choose the rest of the team members, that being the third and you know any alternates or how we want to do the alternate scheme. I think there's some flexibility there. So I thought it would be interesting to record some of the games um, or record at least very minimum my games, but hopefully stream some other people's. And uh, yeah, and then do some, add some commentary later and uh, you know provide some comment, co hopefully good content for uh, the people out there um, from the, uh, the online tournament scene. I want to have a shout out right here to uh, Kai Bosch, who is uh, doing most of the organizing for this. And uh, and as he was the 17th person, also graciously bowed out, which I thought was quite nice. As uh, I've played with him on previous team tournament online, and he's quite a good player. So I'm sure he would have been in the hunt. Uh, this is actually my second round um, of this tournament. I <laughs> had all intentions of recording the first. Um, uh, uh, but unfortunately, completely forgot um, to do so. Um, in that one, I managed to win mostly, you know, in spite of myself. Um, it was a crab unicorn matchup, which is already heavily favored in crab. I naturally flopped because uh, Karata District like turned three and a whole ton of keepers and just kind of, you know, able to <laughs> sort of roll forward with that. Um, uh, I still would have liked to have remembered to push the record button, but I didn't. So we're into the second uh, round here, and uh, my opponent is. Elg Elkara, I apologize if I'm butchering that, um, of playing uh, Phoenix with the new box, Isawa, uh, and uh, Kaiden Isawa, and um, it's open deck list, so which actually comes into play pretty heavily when you're uh, playing online. Uh, for example, in this matchup coming up, I know that there's no assassinations uh, in my opponent's deck, which you can really abuse on good uh, two drop and even one drop characters like Ida Guardian or Yasuki, Shujisuki. Um, and I also, knowing that there's only one censure is actually a pretty big deal, too. Um, of course, they know your deck list as well, although Crabicorn is <laughs> pretty much 100% known already um, and has some spicy stuff you have to play around with. Anyway, you know they have a way of the crab, it doesn't really matter how many they have, or assassination doesn't again, doesn't matter how many they have. Um, until later in the game when you can count them all, whether they're gone or not. Anyway, let's get started. I'll, oh, I'll also be doing something that I've seen uh, Joe do quite well since this is, um, since the L5R games can be quite long and there's some think time and stuff like that. I'll be using the um, uh, speed multiplier and the, uh, occasionally the pause, um, just to hopefully make it uh, cut down on the pause times and uh, get to the sort of parts where I can add some insight uh, slash uh, comp play by play to the game. So anyway, that being said, that preamble out of the way, uh, uh, let's get started here. All right, so right off the bat, I made some strong tactical play uh, plays by uh, winning the die roll and getting to choose to go second. Mulligan wise, um, I dumped to uh, Kuniori. I don't feel he's very strong in this matchup just because of against the waves, clown the mind, etc. And uh, Satoshi's probably almost always a character I want to play first, so another expensive character doesn't fit. Um, come up with Yusuki and Iron Mine, pretty solid. Um, for later on, I'll probably still just buy the Satoshi. 
uh, conflict side. Uh, I kept the spyglass and the skirmisher. Um, spyglass definitely something you want to see as early as possible. So that's a keep. The skirmisher could keep or stay. It's always good to have a cheap conflict character early, especially if you're going to buy something expensive. On my opponent's side, he got dupes of Iona, it, which is a very strong character, but assassinatable. So this is a fairly awkward um, flop for him, except for the Imperial Palace, which will help. Although um, he's only on one sensor, and I know that. So I'm not particularly worried about the um, the favor. Always, always nice to have. So my opponent buys it one fate. I sus I'm hoping that he'll dupe the Yona, but I suspect he won't to get the passing fate. So I use my Satoshi, and he ends up with a pretty shallow um, Satoshi dig for me. I purposely uh, limit my Imperials just so I can get through as much of my my deck into the discard as possible. I want to use Satoshi basically as a way to fuel rebuilds and get keepers. Uh, but I do manage to get a Satoshi after only six cards, um, uh, which is a little disappointing, no keepers, but the dupe is always good. It's like a little free economy there. Uh, we each draw five, as is the norm nowadays. Um, I think about playing the Spyglass, but I only have two Fate, and there's a number of things I want to play. It's a uh, you know, the Spyglass, the Skirmish wouldn't be bad to play, or the Wayfinders to see what I'm going to hit. The Mountain does not fall, of course, because I'm going second. So there's a lot of options, and the way, well, the way the Crabs, <laughs> not, not really an option. Uh, so my opponent gets right into it um, and attacks me Water uh, Conflict. Um, uh, keepers there for him, plus, you know, as we know, they got a number of cards that help them bring water. Uh, I think about what to do. Um, Obviously, I don't want to give him the Keeper super cheap, but Satoshi's not the greatest in a military fight. Um, so I think for a little bit, but with Mountain does not fall in hand, it make, only makes sense to uh, block. I gain a Fate from Manager Garden, which you know makes look not playing the Spyglass for this first conflict uh, not so great, but I didn't know he was going to hit Manager, and I didn't want to be too Fate-starved. He drops a new card, uh, Farron Nino, which is a... a turns out, I mean, I'm, stock is really going up and up for me as I play it played against a lot of Monday Night in real life and then um, in this game as well. Uh, it just comes down, gives him a three stat boost out of nowhere. Um, plus, uh, this is military, but you know it provides other benefits I didn't really think about. It's court games, protection, etc. if it's political. Um, so I'm stopping the break. Um, I dropped the fan, uh, but given what I have in hand, uh, you know, it's, that's about the, the military, only military pumps I have outside of conflict characters. So I'll pass and see what my opponent wants to do. Um, I'm okay to lose the water conflict. It doesn't do anything but give him a keeper, which is um, decent. But if I plan to play Mountain not, not enough Ball, it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm thinking about whether I play the Mountain now or pass and, and risk him also passing, and then I am not get a chance to use it. So uh, yeah, first conflict, <laughs> I have to apologize to my opponent. Uh, you shouldn't have to think so much about the first conflict, but it could kind of drive the rest of my turn. Uh, plus, you know, first turn, fate's pretty precious, even if you get a free one off manicured. So, think about what I should do. I play the mountain on Satoshi. Um, at first, I was also actually overthinking it because um, I, I was a little familiar with uh, Yuona, and I forgot that she doesn't affect um, unique characters. I was worried that if you played a cloud or some other air card, uh, so she would just get bound with the mountain being wasted. So, but I double checked that and, and it wasn't, and then I realized I didn't really have to worry about that. So my opponent, uh, probably realizing we probably also taking the time to think about what's going to happen the rest of the turn too, with the Satoshi, um, who's basically not bowing a defense and going to be striking back. That changes the dynamic of the turn quite a bit. From from pre playing from before I, when I reveal the mountain, in comes the shrine maiden to do a little digging uh, for spells, and he plays it with one fate. Um, yeah. So dumps a tattoo wander and a let go. Not not ter uh, not great, and it gets a supernatural storm storm into hand, which are always good, but with only one Shigenja on the field, it's not not game changing at this point, but. Even better was it is her monk trait to play Hurricane uh, Punch, which is a great deck great card for Phoenix. I mean, they have a few monks to power it. Uh, they got this Shrine Maiden who's powered by it and actually pumped by it and cycles a card. Um, and this is where I read, forgot 
what I just read about Yuona, <laughs> that, um, that it affects non-uniques. Uh, so I drop a skirmish here because I want to try to prevent this break. Um, he plays Supernatural Storm, gets himself up to nine. Um, that can be countered by the box. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that's the option I'll go for right now. Take it up to seven. Uh, he had, it happens to have the second Hurricane Punch. A uh, little unfortunate, but actually doubly unfortunate because not only does it give him the plus two, it bows. Uh, you want to then allow it to bow my skirmisher. Such is life. One punch into another punch. It is a hurricane after all. Um, not much I can do after that. I just, uh, the Manicure card breaks, the, lose the Iron Mine, always kind of a bummer. Especially when I play the skirmisher, no fate. Uh, out comes his keeper. So very good con first conflict from my opponent. He ends up up on cards. Um, and a fairly wide board that's going to be sticking around next turn at this point, uh, although I have a three-fate Satoshi wielding a sword for some reason. So, um, But that one break is, is pretty solid. Uh, pretty nice aggression on his point without spending a lot of resources. I know he, he dropped a few cards and a bit of fate, but he's still at three for the turn. Uh, you know, uh, Obviously, I want to use that mount as much, down at fall as much as possible, so I pass my conflict he passes his conflicts realizing that uh, that keeper's probably not going to beat satoshi on a political attack here uh so i'm free to attack in and just thinking about which ring i want to use i'm also thinking about the spyglass i have the fate to play it you know it's kind of one of those things where you you want to make the mistake of just because you look sort of silly for not playing it first not playing it now when it makes sense and i think it did i was going to make a political attack so the plus one helps i was going to uh, you know, and it draws me a card, and it's going to be on a character with three fates. So, out it comes. Uh, luckily, I hit Rally. Uh, it usually wouldn't be great, because, it, you know, it would turn it into a, a two-strength instead of a five-strength attack, but I, I, the Katana was on uh, Satoshi from the last conflict, so he can um, switch it over, but still leaves Satoshi at four strength for the conflict. He signs the uh, the keeper initiate to prevent the break and you know prevent the loss of honor unopposed. Not that important at this point. He was going to get favor anyway, so keeping the keeper initiate up didn't really matter at all. I win the void ring and uh, get to avoid off Yona. So the reason why I didn't attack the Ona dupe, which uh, might have been wise. Um, there, although I was going void ring anyway, so he wasn't. If I won, he wasn't necessarily do it. So I thought that my opponent, um, uh, you know, maybe overthinking a little bit, but my he had two copies of Iona, so I figured he played the one on the least threatening province and not the other one, so I went for the where the other Iona was and then uh, kind of, you know, so <laughs> tried to kind of analyze it that way. Uh, I thought that would be a, a less threatening province. So we go through, I remember to turn on all my phases, like I always forget to at the beginning of Crab and then remember, um, because you want that fate phase to be uh, on as soon as possible. So um, I buy that uh, Shurisuki from last turn. Uh, I know he has no assassinate from open deck list, so I'm able to load it up because I think that Imperial Palace isn't going to go anywhere, so I'll be using it for a while. He buys Prodigy with uh, three fate, uh, which is a strong investment uh, in this matchup as long as you can protect it from way of the... Uh, Way of the crab, and also buys a naive student this turn because I grab the pace passing fate. So uh, we both hit five again. Um, I draw into some pretty solid cards, both my talismans, uh, and I know one let go is already in the discard. Um, I also get an assassination, um, so hopefully it can help me set up a way of the crab in the future. Although he's got a pretty wide boy right now, <laughs> three characters, three additional characters. I Satoshi, another fairly shallow Satoshi that gets me my own Imperial Palace that I put onto the um, shameful display. Um, I wanted to do that to get keepers early. Sometimes it's best to Satoshi late, so you you know you can protect a dupe of him somewhere, but I wasn't too worried about the dupe because he still had two fate on him, and I wanted to try to get some keepers, but I hadn't get any yet. Uh, so just thinking about my conflict, um, I'm two characters to four, so I'm thinking about playing the conflict character to make the conflict. I'm down a province already. I don't... You know, losing two breaks is clab. I'm just kind of used to it early and then trying to come back from there um, with a better board. So I want to use my big char bigger characters for defense. So I drop a, a small character just to do sort of a poke attack 
I find there's an uphold authority. Um, it's good to know. And then I just go right back to uh, rally to the cause. Um, I don't really want to break up holding authority right now with uh, two reprieves in hand that would be and two talismans would be pretty good uh, both either one of those would be good doubles to get rid of um, so just poking with the wayfinder fire uh, dishonoring this prodigy would be really great so it kind of forces um, a significant defense uh, by him either he blocks with the prodigy itself or you know two characters um, just to equalize or play some cards from hand so I figure it's it's all good uh, he opts for the two characters um Especially given what I have in my hand, I'm not poss not going to win this versus somebody who has 12 cards and starts at higher strength. So um, I could play a conflict character. I might be thinking about it uh, briefly, but it really wouldn't make much sense. I could assassinate somebody again. Not really that strong. So I got my fate from the fire ring. I got two characters to defend. Uh, pretty happy with that. Pass, pass. Um, and then on to his conflict. Um, Earth's got the fate. Um, and it's a more substantial ring, but I'm sure he's not eager to give me keeper fate if he if he misses. Plus, you know, he's incentivized to attack water with the prodigy of water can stand. So, you know, uh, he has to suspect that that Imperial Palace is on the Shameful as well. So, he's got to think about which province he wants to attack as well. He's kind of looking over his cards, um, deciding you know, what what he act, any, any actions he wants to take prior to uh, to his turn. Uh, now he plays a tattooed wanderer, which is a very scary play um, here because that prodigy is going to be in two conflicts a turn usually, if not three sometimes because of against the waves. The two to three coverts is really nasty. And he coverts my big defender here in Satoshi on a political water, um, which is not that big of an effect since he's only going to stand at 1-1, one, one, but um, same time. So I block with the only character I can, the Shurujisuki on Meditations, which is a good hit. I want to get rid of that super prodigy or the soon-to-become super prodigy. He court games is it into a 5-5. Five, five. I have a counter court games, but he'll just choose the naive student. I'm not eager to play that. I could assassinate the naive student first, but... I think I'll just use meditations and uh, try to get a talisman over shameful display. Is kind of, I think, what my initial thought was. So, one let go in the bin. Let's see what happens. Drop the talisman. Fate, I'm doing okay for this turn, and he lets go of that talisman. So, really, I just cross my fingers and hope there's not a third <laughs> let go in his hand. Luckily, it seems like this one uh, sticks. So meditations has been used. He's breaking, so you know, pass. Obviously, I send it back over to Shameful, which you know has the, uh, which actually higher strength because of the Imperial Palace, and then I'll be able to uh, take a little bit of bite out of that prodigy. My opponent's uh, wait just again, it's breaking already, so nothing to do but wait for me to Shameful, which I do do. Taking it down to a winning but not breaking conflict on a somewhat, you know, low impact ring. Here, uh, so he, he makes a pretty smart play. I think he he bettons touches um, the prodigy that waves, giving up. You know, actually no, not. Uh, I touch a fan to Satoshi just so I can win the ring. Um, I guess that was worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Um, just so he doesn't straight one of his characters, but. He's kind of gave up the conflict with that Ben's touch there. Um, but, you know, to honor the Prodigy um, for the next conflict and multiple more conflicts in the future, I think that was a good play in general. Um, so at this point, I think we're, we're, you know, the conflict is what it is, and it's just going to um, move forward from here. Probably thinking on any last actions either one of us has uh, to try to change the outcome, but... Again, the, the, the ring itself is fairly low impact. All the project cares is somebody has it. <laughs> doesn't matter if it's me. Um, of course, Imperial favor with both of us having palaces is a thing, but you know, it's, again, there's only one center that's really affected by it, um, and then the, the small stat boost. So. so now I have to think about my conflict. Um, here, I have a pretty a beefy Satoshi. Um, how do I want to use him? Um, 
rally is the obvious profits target. I don't have any keepers, but uh, Earth still has the fate, so. Isans is, is um, Prodigy up. Who's uh, currently a 5 5. Um, so Satoshi can win, uh, actually can equalize. Satoshi's also strangely a, a 5 5. Um, no, he's a 5 6. So I go political. So six, so winning by default uh, on rally, and of course that's the you know the classic the classic downside of rally that can be a big uh, impact on on uh, sort of its initial attack, but after that becomes very farmable. I'm not exactly farming it here because I'm threatening a break, uh, which I'm sure he's willing to let me have just so I can stop. He can send me over to a more dangerous province in the future. Um, so I might it might have been okay to go scouting here for me, but I played it somewhat safe. Uh, I knew he didn't have Shameful, he had Cory Mori, so, but that was probably under the box. Uh, so, Earthwing fires, um, pretty quick conflict there, pass, pass. He, uh, I draw into a rebuild, I get rid of a Supernatural Storm. I mean, the box can bring it back, but at least it won't be twice in a single conflict. So, I'm, I'm somewhat happy with that, that's fine. Uh, hand advantage is now becoming, uh, you know, not trivial, uh, four cards. Uh, but I, by making that attack, I pretty much gave up the sh my shameful display. Um, here, I mean, my conflict characters were not going to stop this super prodigy, and so Toshi was going to get converted, so there's not much I could do. So I'm down two breaks on the second turn. Um, not exactly where <laughs> you know I want to be, um, but like I said, kind of just, you know, at the time I've been playing Crab, this is not an unusual situation. My board already, I think, looks a bit stronger after the end of the turn. So he drops the Shrine Maiden. Just want to talk about this play for a second. He drops the Shrine Maiden at the end with no fate, uh, which may look like a strange play at first glance, but it's a it's it's, it's a smart play. I, I, I think it was a good one. I think he could have maybe even done it during the conflict. He just didn't want to get it assassinated. Um, he's protecting against a way of the crab on the uh, on the Shujusuki to destroy the Prodigy of the Waves, which should be not like the most lopsided trade you can get sometimes with the crab, but definitely would be one I would probably take. Um, I don't know if he has his one of censure, so I would might hesitate on it. But um, he drops a shrine maiden with one fate uh, to prevent against that in the fate phase, uh, because losing that prodigy would be a, a massive blow to him. To if he ends up, you know, no board down, back down on fate and facing off against the Satoshi. So it's smart play by my opponent. Good, good job there. Um, anyway, So the fate phase goes by. Not that I want to use that, lose that Lishuki. He's pretty strong. So then we move on into the to the next phases. Okay, so going into round three, um, I discard the Kuniyori again. Uh, <laughs> just don't see myself playing it if I have any other options. He does as well. So the flops are not super great for either one of us. I get another Kuniyori, but I think Mine's pretty good. I mean, I have the Kasada with a decent amount of fate to buy him and a Vanguard Warrior, which is always good. The Hidagardi is not particularly useful to me. He got Tadaka, uh, generally not strong in the Crab matchup, and um, I haven't played that many events, so not sure that's worth it. And and the Henshin Disciple uh, is a monk, but two of the Hurricane Punches have already been played, so don't think that's a strong buy either. So he goes ahead and uh, plays Master G and Choshi with uh, two fate on it. Um, I think about exactly what to do. I mean, 10 fate is, is a fair amount, but Casada is still a heavy investment. So I dump two fate on him and put him out there as a big stat stick uh, and an annoyance with his ability. Although I'm still suspecting things are going to start getting clouded pretty soon. I talked about with my opponent afterwards, and he thinks that he should, probably should have clouded the, the Yusuke as soon as he could have. And I agree with him. Um, with no assassinate to get rid of that Yusuke, he ends up drawing a lot of cards, um, like every turn, it's just consistent with that Imperial Palaces and stuff. So this time I get my big Satoshi mill um, <laughs> to get a dupe on Satoshi. Uh, all three keepers hit, hit the thing, and uh, kind of a familiar situation with Satoshi is that um, now I have to start thinking about losing that five honor at some point uh, for cycling my Dynasty deck. But So I go uh, one to five on the bid, which might have been a bit extreme. Um, you know, I'm not going to play Kuni Yori. I don't need the uh, honor for that. But uh, hand size is actually still at parity even after doing that. And it gives me a big honor buffer for assassinates, for spreading the darkness, for that you know, cycling of the deck, etc. 
But he still has that five, you know, that seven five uh, <laughs> prodigy of the waves with covert, which is somewhat scary. Uh, Gene Toshi gets put on the Earth Ring, which is smart because now I'm looking at three keepers. Uh, that'll be getting it back. So whatever you can do to stop me from getting that Earth Ring is uh, a valuable thing to do. So coverting Satoshi on a big uh, political, like most of his board, but you know Phoenix is very impressive in their ability to keep reuse multiple characters, uh, uh, characters especially through political and clarity of purpose. So you know he's attacking with ten, but one of these for sure is going to stay standing or be standing for next conflict and possibly a different one. So. I think about exactly what I want to defend with here. Um, this water conflict. Uh, I mean, Vanguard Warriors can get bad anyway, but you know, it's Casada and Vanguard Warriors are not your typical <laughs> defenders of water for conflicts. But this is also the third break, and the third break I consider to be a big problem uh, for Crab. Like, I was a little nonchalant about the other two, but um, this third break would be a big deal. I, I, it just costs. I have to just way overcommit too much to have to defend my stronghold round after round after round. I try to get some momentum going the other way. So I block with three quarters of my board <laughs> and those ones aren't standing back up. Um, and uh, so it's, you know, it's a heavy commitment on this defense. I just don't want, uh, I just don't want this sort of break in this conflict. I mean, he, he may come back with a lot of characters and get me next conflict, but that's to worry about later in the round. So I think a couple times about this Vanguard warrior, but it's going to get bad anyway. So might as well. So defend. Um, and then, uh, yep, finally settle on my defenders. I do the Yusuke right away, uh, which is naturally, normally the thing I, I want to do because it's because of, uh, assassination generally. Just want to use that ability, but I know my opponent doesn't have one. It was just kind of habit to do that. Uh, I should have probably took the Spyglass there personally between the Skirmish and Spyglass. Uh, and drops another Fair Nino, that's Fair Nino 3 for people who are counting, um, which points out another good good thing about that card is that the Court Games production, because I had a Court Games in hand, and I would have wanted to play it in this conflict, but now I can't, because it would just go on the zero glory, you know, Nino that's going to go away at the end of the turn. So I should have played that first instead of Yusuke, but so be it. Uh, so here he goes up to 14. Um, I pass because I... No, I'm not going to win this conflict, but um, I just don't want it to break. So out comes Kudnisawa to re replay an event. Um, he chooses a Supernatural Storm to get another plus three, so now he's threatening the break. Um, I luckily have this fan for Kasada. You know, not again, not the typical recipient of a fan, but whatever, whatever I can do here. Um, so I'm just fingers crossed he doesn't have another pump because. I can basically get one more strength on my Vanguard Warrior with the court games, and then I'm out of, uh, and then, and then I'm out of uh, political pumps myself. So uh, he plays Clarity Purpose on the Hitoshi. So two of those big characters that started this attack are still going to be available to him next conflict. You know, like I said, very impressive um, abilities for the clan right now. Um, and but at least I, I staved off the break. Um, I don't use the Talisman of the Sun, which is probably a misplay here. I mean, I know he's going to make another attack anyway. Um, and I think I was worried. I didn't want to use it because I was worried I might have to pull him off my stronghold um, if he did break there. So I'd have to leave it leave it for the next next attack so he could not threaten to break my stronghold. But my fourth province again, which would be not fun, turning off rebuild, etc. So on to me... Um, what conflict am I going to make? Uh, so I got the one character, <laughs> no fate, to drop conflict characters, kind of really heavily invested in the board, which is which is solid, but I still have one fate. Uh, so Void Ring looks pretty juicy to provide that fate to me. I Mountain does not fall on Casada, so he's available for defense on the military, uh, except not against that Prodigy. Um, that's a big problem, right, um, that he can cover the Prodigy. I had a rebuild in a fable ground in the yard, so I had a scheme for it for it, um, for how to get around that covert. So I make a, a fairly decent political void attack here into an unknown province. It's uh, Meditations of the Tao, which is okay. Uh, I don't want to lose that Satoshi, but I don't, the two reprieves in hand and can rebuild the Iron Mines, etc. I'm not too fearful that it's going away anytime soon. Get my Spyglass draw, which is nice. Um, 
And uh, yeah, to see who he, who he defends with, how heavily he wants to defend this this attack, as opposed to the counterattack. And it's Void Ring, so it it's pretty important. Um, like the Prodigy of the Waves is a big part of his offense right now. So I can make the last turn I have to put up with it, the better, right? So. So and I go well. The only good thing is it's not a water attack, so I don't have to worry about Nino's <laughs> attack. So, in I go. Um, although, yeah, I have to check out how Pharaoh Nino works with Hikita Kasada because I think there was some weirdness there with it canceling uh, Hikita Kasada's ability. So he gets off the Hurricane Punch on the Keeper Initiative. He's just trying to cycle cards. It's a political, but he wants to find something because right now it's uh, eight to eight, and uh, the Void Ring's going to go off. He doesn't have another pump. And so the Void Ring goes off and takes it makes this the last round. You'll have the Prodigy. Prodigy gets straightened. Uh, still has Covert. Um, so, okay, here's a here's a here's a pretty significant misplay on my part. I had forgotten for some reason in the last five minutes of gameplay that uh, Master G and Toshi was on Earth. So he attacks Earth. And I think, oh wow, that's a lot of keepers that I win this. Let's rebuild into favorable and move into favorable. Of course, you can't. I can't do that because uh, <laughs> um, uh, rebuild is not a spell, so I can't play a spell uh, to do the rebuild um, in order to move in Casada and potentially win this conflict. So I'm looking around. Aha! Thanks to the to the latest pack, I do actually have a spell. <laughs> so kind of get a little desperate to stop this break here. Um, not that it's a bad play in general, anyway. Um, but with Mountain on Casada, um, so the Mountain on Casada wasn't the strongest play. I mean, I'll get to attack with Casada, which is good, but I didn't get to double the fan with him. And then I can uh, spreading the darkness on the skirmisher to bring him up to five and make him untouchable. Um, although I'm, I don't think my opponent had anything to really touch him in military anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Pump up to five. I managed to stop the break once again, although I lose um, Earth Ring. Oh, it goes one of my HUA finders. Just a card. So there's an against the waves to stand up. They make a pretty serious, uh, pretty impressive defense against this Casada attack. Not that I won't take it, but I'll give it a shot. I mean, Favor, kind of, he has a palace I don't, and he has high glory characters I don't. So Favor is his, you know, it's very hard for me to take Favor away from him. So I'm thinking about where to attack and with what. Um, you know, meditation's already been used. Um, I could go sort of see what's underneath the palace, although I'm not really too worried about it. And I know I can't break it anyway this turn, so. I should uh, be using the Vanguard Warrior. That's another, uh, that's a small misplay at least. because Just because Cloud the Mind could be waiting to trick me or he could have Cloud the Mind. Um, and then I wouldn't be able to put that fate on. Might be a good trade for him, although he's at zero fate too, and I kind of have a better economy. So trading fate for fate is not, not, not in his favor. He blocks strength eight. I think about I could assassinate the shrine maiden, attempt to win that way. Um, but it's just fire, uh, and the fire would probably go on the Jushin Toshi, Master Jushin Toshi. So it doesn't really matter. I think I'll just save my card and kind of like chill out and try to get to a point where my board state can just kind of take care of things <laughs> as opposed to any kind of real good, good, good gameplay on my part or, you know, good, good use of cards or anything. Um, so yeah, we move on to uh, turn three and the board disparity is starting to get a, somewhat pronounced. Um, and I have some saves in hand. Uh, Kuniori, I, I'm down to only eight cards in Dynasty, so I keep him, although I have really need no intention of buying him. I just don't want to, uh, <laughs> to get to that minus five honor anytime soon. Uh, Kaido Envoy, you can't go wrong with that. I think about putting one fate on it just for the fate phase Way of the Crab because you've probably noticed that Way of the Crab's been in my hand, I think, from turn one, maybe turn two. Um, and I just haven't been able to get it off. Keeper clans, once they start getting keepers out, it starts to get really hard to get it off. Um, so I got my first Cloud the Mind. Um, and uh, and I have each UA Finder play it. So I can use it. There's not any great targets on the board right now. Uh, it would have been really nice to play it with the the, the Prodigy of the Waves before. So yeah, I, buy, I buy an Iron Boy. He buys an Adept and a Naive Student, uh, sort of equalize our boards. But my fate advantage is getting fairly pronounced because um, I'm able to pass first there and 
because I had three characters from last turn, etc. Conflict wise, um, I am thinking about okay, do I this is a turn for a big attack or not? It probably uh, I figured not because I still got to worry about this third break. Um, and you know, next turn I think it's probably still going to be better still for me. Um, so I just poke with the Caillou Envoy into Meditations on the Tau, just grab my fate from the air ring. Um, you know, and, and these little characters are good for this kind of thing, right? Just force kind of an over defense. Uh, so he, he blocks with the Adepts of the Wave, which I'm fine with. Uh, so I don't really intend to win this conflict. Um, our air ring isn't super important now. Although he's down to six honor, um, but it's not that low. I can always uh, opt to uh, move in one of my characters to uh, with the Fable Ground to win too. Although the only the Casada wouldn't be the best choice just because you get meditation. So I'm hovering over the assassinates in, in breathless anticipation, and then the finger of Jade comes down, which is a smart play. My opponent knows I have two assassinations. Every crab has at least two. And um, I haven't played any yet. So <laughs> he drops the finger of Jade on his, you know, fairly significant investment of a good character, gives covert, etc. Uh, so that ends that plan. It kind of ends my, any plan I have of winning that conflict. And uh, pass through onto his conflict. Um, so he's lost his covert of my big guys. So now he's staring at a, and he's the talisman's there. So he's staring at a, you know, a little bit of a daunting attack, I would say, in. But time isn't necessarily uh, on any one side against crab, uh, possibly scorpion. They play for the long game too. But so certainly has to be aggressive. And you know, any at any time that their break can come and start to really put the pressure on me. Uh, Jean Toshi, I forget. Sorry, I missed it in the chat box as to what she's on. Maybe even Earth again to, to deny me keepers. I could probably under. I probably didn't put enough effort into getting those three keepers out when they became available these two turns. And my opponent's done a really good job of keeping, making the plays to keep me off getting those keepers. Uh, the danger being, of course, that somehow I get through, or I get through my seven last seven cards in Dynasty, and I lose access to all those keepers. <laughs> that would be quite sad. So let's take a second, think think through the bard state, which only makes sense. Um, check his his discards, see what his stronghold can bring. Kuden Isawa can bring back. Um, he against the waves, the prodigy. Um, it's one of his stronger military characters, or equivalent to any stronger military character. Gives another body to attack with. He's giving covert uh, to to the adept uh, himself, and he attacks with everyone. So it's a major attack, major um, push to get through uh, and get this third break, which I think is the right play for him. Um, like maybe the keeper's not necessary, etc. But uh, Covert's my largest political defender. But I still have Yusuke and the <laughs> the fanned up Kasada to attend, uh, uh, to attack with. Plus I have the Fable Ground, so the Covert is certainly much less impactful than it's been to this point. Um, so I think about whether I want to defend with Kasada or not, um, because I can just move into Satoshi, who's a stronger political defender. So it's kind of whether I want to defend with Kasada and not move in Satoshi, or whether I want to... Um, not defend with Kasada and then move in Satoshi as the second defender because you know one defender is definitely not going to cut it here. But um, which two? I have a political conflict left, so it's kind of yeah. You know, where do I want the bigger strength on my attack or my defense? With all four coming in, it, it might make sense to make the bigger bigger political be the defender. But we'll see. What we'll forward. So I'm dithering a little bit on choosing my defenders. I go. <laughs> well, discard checking that's that's the pro way to 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 buy yourself time check check people's discards in real life and on online um mulling it over i mean i have conflict characters to play in my box but this is a big attack so you know adding two strengths from a box that you would find is not strongest I just immediately send in satoshi i mean i get i get the spyglass draw court games happens Honors up his prodigy of the waves, which is untouchable right now for me. I draw. I don't really want a second way of the crab <laughs> to sit in my hand. So mountain strong though. 
a mountain's nice to see there. Feral Nino, number four, um, hits the table <laughs> to give two more strengths. Uh, and again, get him close to blocking. Uh, I get so annoyed with him, I attempt to assassinate it. Um, but it's three cost as well, so I can't. Um, yeah, and uh, it's kind of thinking over my options here. Um, I always have the box, so I can give myself two strengths and make the block harder. I mean, the break harder. Uh, and I can also talisman over. So I think I'm definitely talisman at some point. He's making the right attacks, going in to defend the wall first forcing me to um, give up, you know, that sort of ability to move over. And so, but definitely getting rid of that Giantoshi around earlier is uh, what I want to do. So I take him over to Meditations. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing I learned with Cab eventually, that it's not... Sometimes you feel like you're just dithering and you're you're being overly defensive and you know almost almost BMing your opponent, but you're not. It's just the clan and the way it plays. Like um, next turn, it always just seems to be better for you. Um, obviously, you can't do that indefinitely, but um, you know when you kind of have better board going in, plus fade advantage, plus etc. Shouldn't be. Whenever I I I, I lose in boneheaded ways is because I just get too over aggressive too early. And uh, just a you know break I don't expect comes through. So uh, watering happens, um, which is, doesn't isn't that impactful. And we were talking about it later too that he thought he may have over invested in the watering or gone too hard in the watering. I mean he had those Feral Ninos to help with, but yeah, sometimes the water rings didn't do a whole lot. I mean especially here when there's no Prodigy to get something back, I can see it. But I mean with Prodigy on the table. It's kind of, you have to go for water ring, barring any secluded temple. So I drop a, a, wayfair, a wayfinder with three on it. Uh, a lot of fate, again, because I knew he didn't have assassinate, so there's really no harm with it given my fate pool. And I just wanted to make sure I had a character available for Cloud the Mind, should I want to use it. And I'm actually running low on, I mean, that's my last cheap Shigenja. So, uh, and I'm not eager to buy the expensive ones, given that um, against the waves is a thing. So... Um, I leave my Wayfarer at home for any sort of defense. Um, or no, I'm thinking about which way do I go. Do I defend strong with Casada, Or do I attack strong with Casada? So I end up doing just basically a poke sort of attack. And it's political as well. So Casada's not as strong as you would think, fan or no fan. Um, so the Wayfinder goes in on Void, which threatens to clear you know, his entire board. So he has to defend it. Um, and the Wayfinder, you know, is not not going to not going to beat an uh, an honored adept of the waves anyway. Um, not that I want to break up <laughs> holding authority. Um, so my opponent, uh, you know, blocks with the uh, adept of the waves and fairly easily wins this conflict. Uh, keeping favor, <laughs> it's all favor all the time for Phoenix here, and I just keep uh, waiting for the other shooter to drop on that censure. Um, but I've gotten a couple of mountains off, so I'm pretty happy. So, you know, standing Casada at the end of the turn is kind of shows you that you didn't necessarily play that turn the smartest. Um, but I think it was okay. I mean, he's not contributing any glory, uh, and he wasn't using any conflicts, so it's not great. But um, somehow, you know, board is starting is is saving me more more than play sort of in the last couple of rounds, and I just go into the next round with a pretty decent um, board. Uh, keep my characters I have just. Make sure that Dishonor is not really an issue at any point. Um, I'll flop into an Iron Mine. Again, big brain plays there. Um, <laughs> Iron Mine, for, for all three of my characters have uh, no fate on them, so an Iron Mine is most welcome, plus a Vanguard Warrior, which is also great. Um, so my, my Destiny flops have been really good in the last couple turns. I mean, he gets uh, a Prodigy of the Waves, which I think a lot of the strengths of his deck is built around, um, or at least it's a very good character, especially when you're behind on board. It kind of can equalize for two characters. Um, and um, gets Suki, which I think is a strong character, and a favorable ground, a useful holding. So, Prodigy with two fate. I drop on the Vanguard Warrior. He's going to get the passing fate. Uh, I th drop on the Heat of Guardian, because uh, I have one holding in play, and I can do this. Uh, <laughs> now he, he's actually not there for any conflicts. I just want to see if I can either get the Way of the Crab off or get that censure out of his hand so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, unlucky for my opponent, I don't think he had the censure, or, or at least he decided it wasn't worth playing at this point. Uh, so I do get rid of the honored adept of the waves, which I was happy enough with. Not the most, again, impactful way of the crab, but um, uh, I think it worked out pretty well. 
and he he, uh, <laughs> he he concludes that he's in trouble now. Um, and I lament on his lack of censure uh, to this point. So we go into the bidding phase. Uh, I think, uh, I, yeah, I bid one. He bids, he bids uh, f five. Um, so his honor now is 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 in, the, you know, now it's definitely in the danger zone. Uh, he's going to need cards to win any of these conflicts for coming up. But at the same time, getting him down to three, and then I draw into my first wit, watch commander to sort of make matters worse here. So he attacks into, well, he thinks about where he's going to attack um, with a talisman. I mean, he's going to hit both provinces regardless, but it's best to start with defend the wall. Um, attacks in big political. I'm just, at this point, it's really not worth me taking any chances at all on this. And I have another mountain um, now that I'm second player. So I'll go in, spyglass up something, drop a watch commander on. Um, he wants to get the Keeper plus, okay, yeah, this yeah, this sequence uh, is embarrassing, but I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be objective about my mistake. So I mount Satoshi, um, and we get to see the censure. So that was, a, that was a really good censure, keeping that Satoshi off, although doing the Satoshi instead of the way the crab cost an honor from the watch commander, of course, you couldn't know that. Down Nino number five hits the table, four or five, I can't remember, but there's a lot of them, um, which is it uh, doesn't... Actually, doesn't trigger. I, I think there's something wrong with Nino. It doesn't trigger the um, watch commander either. Uh, court games happens. I watch commander that, so he's down to one honor. Um, and I, yeah, I misplayed this on the defense a lot because I could have just made sure this didn't go through, but instead I didn't commit the, the, the Yusuki for some reason. And because it, to this point, all the water rings hadn't, I mean, that's not an excuse <laughs> at all. It's just bad play on my part. But um, the water rings hadn't been that impactful, and I just kind of didn't even occur to me that it's Kasada or Yusuke were going to get bowed by this, and they did. Plus, to make matters worse, okay, I'll slow down so I can uh, really get into how dumb my plays were here. Um, and this one I'll chalk up m mostly to bad play, but also partly because Crab is just not used to having Cloud the Mind. I thought, oh, everything would be fine. I'll just he'll attack enemy with massive Prodigy of the Waves. I'll just cloud the mind on his prodigy of the waves, and uh, I'll try to be tricky about it. I'll wait the last second to cloud him, so he, you know, he makes all his decisions thinking that he has another uh, conflict with his cloud. Uh, of course, I forgot that he was first player, and after the conflict, he could just ready before I could play the cloud. So, kind of move my mouse around, sort of in disbelief at my own foolishness there. Um, but um, such is life. Uh, lessons learned, hopefully, now that I've done it and actually talked about it. Um, so yeah, this this turn goes a lot worse for me than than, than it. Than it could have. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is manicured, um, so I'd rather go there than meditations. Eh, eh, I don't know if that's the, again the best call right now, but might as well flip it over. I mean, losing the Ichi Wayfinder is not the biggest deal, but um, uh, yeah, because not could, could having Kasada be bowed by that conflict basically stop me from getting my keepers out here, or be having a very easy road to getting my keepers by just stacking military Casado. So that was a really uh, unfortunate, for me, misplay. <laughs> but so he, he makes a big defense. It is the Earth Ring. Um, you know, again, three keepers will pop out here out of nowhere if he doesn't defend it, um, doesn't win this ring. Plus, you know, the, with only one honor, he won't be bidding more than one. So every card's pretty valuable. Uh, Cute Nasawa is bowed. Um, to play Clarity. So, yeah, we're going to have another three conflict prodigy. I uh, dishonor one of the other characters. So, what I'm hoping to do is catch my opponent, because keeping the prodigy honored at this point is quite valuable, right? It's going to be another conflict plus another turn. I'm hoping he will dishonor the keeper, and then I can assassinate it for the win um, right here. But, uh, you know, he makes it smart play as he's been doing all game and uh, realizes that assassination is probably my plan there, and I. He dishonors the prodigy. So, I Yusuke, I can get another assassination, which I can't use right now, or Finger of Jade, which uh, he doesn't have a lot of cards to affect my character. So, not the greatest choices, but, you know, card's a card. So, I... I mean, it doesn't matter either way. I have plenty of honor, so I might as well take the assassination for future rounds. Just start throwing them around willy-nilly. And... 
I've already used a court game, so I'm kind of out of buffs politically here. I could assassinate the keeper anyway and threaten to win this conflict. Which I do do. And then I gotta hope he has no other buffs because um, that's it for mine if I want to try to win this earth conflict. Uh, yep, no, Shrine Maiden comes down. He does have it. Uh, but he is so low on cards and honor that he opts not to activate the Shrine Maiden. Um, and maybe he's counted his spells and realizes he's not going to get much draw anyway. Uh, that's, but, you know, still, use of, of a fate when when the fate disparity is already kind of leaning my way is good. Good thing to force for just three honor, which I have tons of. So not much else to do other than once again not get my <laughs> not get my keepers into play. Third round now of not getting keepers into play. Uh, when I have three in the Discord, I'm sure many a crab will be uh, shaking their heads just to seeing seeing this kind of stuff. But and the prodigy was clarity, so there you go. Still there, um, still huge. Uh, at least only huge politically. Um, so my Vanguard warrior has a decent chance of, of defending. Uh, especially with the box, any attack. Um, but in this round, I don't have... Um, I'm going to have to give up my second conflict to make any sort of defense because I have no conflict characters, but and I can't risk that third break. I mean, I might have been able to this down, but I think our warrior wasn't going to do much by himself anyway. So he can test the air ring because he needs it. Um, you know, uh, in this round, hmm, I don't know. I had some... Uh, uh, probably the better line for me would have been to push air a lot harder uh, in my first conflict after he'd gone down to one honor, and I probably could have taken it outright. But to be honest, the sort of dishonor, even though I saw he was down to one, wasn't really in my mind. It's not my, it's kind of silly, but it's not my preferred method <laughs> of winning. It always seems a bit cheap. Um, so, uh, but you know, dragging out the game for no reason other than personal bias against dishonor isn't a good idea either. So he goes heads into meditations. I defend with my um, Vanguard Warriors, pass, pass. Neither one of us have buffs who we either have or want to put into this conflict. Uh, he gains two honor, take, definitely taking him out of the danger zone. Or, no, sorry, still in the danger zone, but a lot farther. Vanguard up with Casada, and then you here see some crab disgustingness. I mean, the Phoenix disgustingness is using those characters over and over again, but the crab disgustingness is keeping them all you know <laughs> all game so kasada i had three characters kasada yasuki and satoshi all at no fate uh, this round and they're all going to stay uh thanks to iron mind vanguard warrior and a, a, a reprieve so that's you know i mean if you start counting off the cards uh, value plus the face value of the characters that's probably like 20 fate worth of worth of characters or you know 15 16 <laughs> that are going to stick around uh because of all those effects Okay, we move to the next round. And Kuniori gets to sit on his, his meditations of the Tao throne for longer, just to, to slow down how fast I'm going through my dynasty. He keeps Suki, solid character. Gets to see a second keeper at this point. Uh, again, you know, strategic. My <laughs> my strong strategic plays continue as I just get a dupe of Kasada out of nowhere um, to keep him. Make sure he's around next round as well. Uh, lots of fate, so I, I buy um, the Borderlands Defender with three, you know, three extra fate. He plays a naive student. I still, still, even with seven fate, don't want to play Kuniori, so I will. Although maybe his ability ditching cards would have been nice, but uh, and uh, Earth would also have been good. Earth provinces, <laughs> I mean, sort of the Earth Ring attack. Um, so I think about buying him. Am I going to? No. So I <laughs> opt not to buy him again. Take the passing fate. Um, And that's more of a fake denial. Like seven versus eight doesn't particularly matter that much. So I and then they flipped another Iron Mind. So I know there's some more Dynasty flop block for me because I have a rebuilds, two rebuilds in hand. So I can't actually, uh, I think, save all three of these characters again, or I can save the two of those that are there just off Iron Minds.
So jumping into the conflict phase, I uh, so okay, okay. So now now I think it's you know crabs been dithering long enough. It's time to go. Um, oh, he bought uh, Suki and knife students. So he's got a pretty very strong political defense, but military um, not so much. So I just flying with Casada. Um, Again, Earth would be a good choice, but two Fate on the Fire Ring is, and a Prodigy of the Wave Suit Honor is a pretty compelling thing to do. So, heading with Casada. Uh, so, that's a seven, seven strength attack. Uh, assassinate the Suki. I know the Sentry's already gone, so the, that's going to be a pretty good value. Uh, assassinate. Uh, get to see he's, he's two display of powers in his deck, so get to see one of them. So he, he can onto this priority of the ways, which is pretty solid. But I do get my second break, so I equalize on breaks. Um, it was undefended, so it takes him down to two honor, which is significant because I still have a watch commander. Um, and I know all three tattoo wanders have been used or lost to um, some of them were lost to shy mains. Um, so I still have the Watch Commander available, so I can make whatever conflicts he wants to be in for the, for the rest of this round. Very difficult. I mean, the Air Ring is unclaimed, but you know, he's kind of... He's not that high on Fate, so there's Fate on the Void Ring. Void Ring's always quite good. Plus, he, has, he needs to worry about the Water Ring for um, his Prodigy. So he passes his conflict. Uh, again, he can't really have too many unopposed conflicts, especially on an air against him, or he'll just lose. Uh, so he opts to pass conflict. So I'm looking at my political conflict. How big should I make it? And with what? So I go political earth. So now I decide, okay, better get those keepers out. Now's the time. So 14 strength uh, earth conflict. <laughs> Draw some cards off the spyglass. Uh, so this Spyglass and that Satoshi have been in the game um, from the beginning, and this is round six, <laughs> I believe. Yes, I think so. So that's, that's pretty decent um, value there. Uh, I go ahead into Meditations. Um, there's a no defense. I dig up another Reprieve with my Shujisuki. And then uh, he, he, he <laughs> poor sad crab, once again, does not get the Earth Ring. Um, but uh, both of us have forgotten, actually, that uh, Watch Commander would still proc in that instance. And uh, thus, uh, he lost an honor for honor posed and an honor for, uh, <laughs> for uh, the Watch Commander. And that sort of ended the game right there. Um, for it. So I think overall, very well played by my opponent. And I had actually... If I had to be honest, I'd say he outplayed me. Um, sorry, the commentary was kind of one-sided because I could see my hand and sort of remember how I played. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I just uh, made enough right plays at the, at the right times and uh, kind of um, coos through on, uh, on crab board. Um, <laughs> sticking around and sticking around and sticking around. Um, so anyway, that's that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope uh, I can provide some more games from this sort of uh, tournament to decide who's going to be on Team Canada in the upcoming Discord League uh, World Cup coming in September. Um, not only my own, but hopefully I can stream a couple other ones as well and and provide them. Uh, so in the comments, let me know. Any feedback is good feedback. Uh